blessings to all our friends in the name of Jesus. We are living now times that are very challenging. And today I want to share with you that in the Word of God, it says that in the feast of the Lord, there are signs of protection for His people. And with that purpose, I want to invite you to come with me to the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 1 and 2. We're going to read Leviticus 23, 1 and 2. It says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, The feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. First, I want you to check the verse there on your screen. It says very clear that our, the feast of the Lord were given to Israel, but we're from the Lord. So the Lord gave, gave feast to the people, gave divine appointments. In the Hebrew, the word feast means moedim, and it's a divine appointment. It's in a specific moment when the Lord wants to talk to us, when He wants to celebrate with us, when He wants to hear a specific prayers with a specific intentions. Now, at the same time, the Lord says in these verses that the convocations needs to be are holy and needs to be holy. They are holy convocations. These are the divine appointments. And we as His people, we need to be holy in the name of Jesus to participate in these convocations. Now, there are different holy convocations. There are different feasts. I'm going to just give some names for you. For example, the day of rest is a weekly one. We have the Passover. We have the uh, bread without leaven. We have the fir fruits. We have Pentecost. We have trumpets. We have the day of forgiveness or day of atonement or known in Hebrew as Yom Kippur. And also we have tabernacles. This is a group of feasts of the Lord, a group of divine appointments that the Lord is calling us to be with Him. Now, let me give you an example, like when you need a doctor and you call the doctor to set an appointment and the doctor is going to be with you at that specific moment of the appointment. The same is about the feast of the Lord. The Lord gave you, give you an appointment so you could be ready to talk to him and he wants to hear your voice. And also he wants to rejoice in your life because you have set aside for the glory of his presence that specific time that is specific convocation from the Lord to your life. Now, it's very important also to know that these convocations and these feasts are written, are, are, are written by God in the Old Testament, but He is calling us to celebrate them eternally. Where, this is, is, where, where we could find this, let's go to the book of Exodus, Chapter 12, verse 14. Exodus 12, 14. Let's read what the Word of God is saying to us here. In the book of Exodus 12, 14. So this day shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep, keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. Now, pay attention. Let's see this verse on the, on the screen. The word memorial. The word memorial, it's coming from the same root word in Hebrew that means to be recognized, to be marked. In these times, in these times that we're living that are risky and dangerous, we need to understand the importance of being marked by the Lord in our lives. The word memorial there means also to be marked by the Lord. What means that? That means that when you celebrate the Feast of the Lord, you are being marked by the Lord. The Lord is going to be uh, receiving in the memories of your actions in your favor. And that is very important. It's very important in the times that we're living. We're talking about the mark of the beast, the mark of the devil. But let's get focused first in the mark of God in our life. Because if we are marked by God, we have nothing 
to be feared, says the word. When we are marked by God, we are preserved. So this celebration of the feast, they are memorials, are moments where in the spiritual realm, we are marked by the Lord. Hallelujah. That's good. And also, keep your attention, it says that it's an everlasting ordinance. And when you go in the Hebrew to the word everlasting and you check it out, that word everlasting is coming from the same word that also means eternity. So what the Lord is saying to us is that the feasts of the Lord are so important to be celebrated. And it's so important to know that we need to celebrate them eternally. So to understand the moments that we're living and to be protected in the moments that we're living, we need to be celebrating Jesus. Jesus in our feast. Jesus in the feast of the Lord. Because Jesus is the Alpha and consumer of, of our faith. The only way that we could celebrate the feast of the Lord in this moment is with Jesus. Why with Jesus? Because before he came the first time, the feasts were celebrating, observing, and in faith of his coming, the coming of Messiah. But he came already. Now we celebrate the feast as a rehearsal, a training for his second coming. And we're saying, Lord Jesus, come, come. And it's a rehearsal for his second coming. So we need to be celebrating in the name of Jesus as a rehearsal for his second coming and in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we need to understand that in these times, we need to celebrate the feast of the Lord also in the holiness of God. You know, many times in the Bible, uh, it's written that the people of Israel, they were sinning, they were in corruption, and they were trying to celebrate the feast. And the Lord warned them through the prophets and say, I'm not paying attention to the celebration of the feast because you are doing, not doing this in the proper way. So let's be focused in walking with Jesus and celebrate Jesus in the feast and celebrate the feast in Jesus in this season so we could be marked by the Lord for his glory and we could be marked with his holiness. Now understanding that is only in the name of Jesus. Now why we need to celebrate eternally? You could see in the book of Genesis from Genesis to Revelation that, this, that the feast from Genesis to Revelation you see that we are having a God that wants to keep us for eternity, because He is eternal. Let's go to the book of Psalms 93, verse 2. It says, Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. He's an eternal God. And He sent Jesus to our life so we could repent of our sins and we could spend eternity with Him. And even in eternity, celebrating Jesus and with Jesus, His feast, the feast of the Lord. When you want to understand the book of Revelation, you need also to understand the Feast of the Lord. Because the Feast of the Lord gives the proper meaning, the proper significance to many chapters of the book of Revelation. Now, we celebrate the Feast of the Lord, but we need to celebrate in Jesus, in the one new man. We become, we become the one new man when we accept Jesus. Let's read about this. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, from verse 12 to 14. Let's read verse 4, 12 first. It says that at the, that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. When we were away from the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God is saying that we were aliens, of the commonwealth, of the citizenship of Israel. We don't know all the, all, all the benefits of the covenants of the promise. We don't know about the hope that the Lord had given through, a, through the promise of Abraham to Israel. The hope that the Lord gave to the nations and the families through the blessing of, of, of Abraham. And we were without the Lord. So we were far from knowing about the celebrations of the Lord. We were celebrating pagan things things that are not in the Bible. We were far away. But then on verse 13, it says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Now we are close to the Lord. And when we are close to the Lord through the precious blood, we are close to His feast. 
We are close to his promises. We are close to the covenant because we in Jesus Christ, we are coming to the revelation that we are a one new man. And the one new man is composed. When Jews and Gentiles, they're coming to the middle point. And in that middle point, Jesus appeared and he finished with the wall of partition. And we receive the shalom of God. In verse 14, it says that for he, that's talking about Yeshua himself, is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. So we need to come to the agreement, the agreement of the, with the word of God. If you're a gentle, you need to stop being far away, celebrating things that are not in the word and coming close to Jesus. And in him, you're going to be able to celebrate the feast of the living God. And also the Jews, that they are still celebrating the feast, like waiting for the coming of Messiah. When Messiah had already come and they need to celebrate the feast, as a rehearsal for the second coming. So this is the importance of the feast of the Lord in the middle of the times that we are living. So be aware and don't stop celebrating Jesus in his feast and 24-7 for his glory. Be blessed. See you soon.